All right, so today I decided I'll do the, the preview video. I'll say the prediction for tomorrow or early Saturday. We'll see, but I just kind of want to uh, go over some of the matchups again. I know I did some of this in my video from yesterday when I just kind of had some first impressions based on what I've seen and based on history, but I'll just get into it. <clears throat> Starting with the coaching staff, we all know Nick Saban, Kathleen Kiffin, Jeremy Pruitt. They're doing their job. Uh, Alabama is is humming along. Uh, the coaching staff is adapting well, and that's good. You see us a good sign, coaches and their players, and, and how the team chemistry is working out. It's been good. What I noticed also is that LSU on their side with Ed Orgeron, I think he has those guys excited and they're ready to play for him, and they are they look like a much more motivated team uh, these past three or four weeks. Also with Steve Insminger calling the plays on offense now they've added a like a couple of wrinkles but they're basically trying to get the execution down trying to uh, mix it up a little bit uh still run heavy uh but the way that they execute the run heavy game plan looks a little bit different uh which is what a lot of people were calling for and so they they're they're going for that that's what they try to do uh Dave Aranda for the LSU defense came from Wisconsin. Of course, I talked about that. His schemes, uh, they they work well. He's been doing it for a while. Uh, his players respond to it. They they fill their gaps. They 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 get aggressive when they need to. He'll send a blitz. He'll have them hold up on the line of scrimmage when there's read options in it. RPOs. Uh, he's doing a great job. That's <laughs> that's just what it comes down to. Uh, and one of the more underrated things will be Lane Kiffin's uh, play calling versus Dave Aranda's defensive play calling. Will Dave Aranda allow Lane Kiffin to dictate uh, what will happen, or will he try to dictate to the Alabama's offense what will happen? What I'm saying is, will he be blitzing more? Uh, will he be coming after the Alabama offense? Will he be sending players after Jalen Hurts, or will he sit back in coverage and make Jalen Hurts pass? Those are the things to look forward to, and that'll be interesting because we'll see what Lane Kiffin decides to do. Will he uh, let them play back and then let Jalen Hurts throw shorter passes to take advantage of the space? Will he take a few shots down the field? Will he commit to running the ball? Uh, is LSU's, LSU's defense is seemingly more stout than some of the other defenses, and so uh, will he commit to running the ball even if LSU gets a few stops early on. That matchup of Lane Kiffin versus Dave Aranda will be fun to watch. And just getting to some of the players now, you have on LSU, you have Arden Key, you have Kendall Beckwith, you have Jamal Adams. They even got the newer corner who Ole Miss tried to pick on in their last game, uh, Jackson, number one, uh, to uh, mild success at times that maybe got a penalty here and there, but he held up pretty well. So LSU secondary is looking pretty good. You got their defensive line, which is holding them well. It's not as good as Alabama, but uh, they're still talented and they do their job. I noticed the number 99 holding up well at the D tackle spot. You got Arden Key, number 49, who's a long, rangy, fast guy coming off the end who does a lot of different things that defense. I see him standing up. I see him on in his hand in the ground. And Kendall Beckwith just he's just playing great as a linebacker right now. So the LSU defense, they seem to be playing great as a unit. Top of down, I don't think they are uh, as good as Alabama's defense. And I'll get into that. Uh, I think Alabama has more uh star power on defense or more guys with the uh, more impact, uh, but LSU's defense is nothing to sneeze at. Now, LSU's offense, on the other hand, like I was saying before, Steven Smeaker tried to implement a few things, add a few wrinkles to get them uh, not looking as monotonous as before. Uh, they use, they're trying to use, I saw in the Ole Miss game, they had Leonard Fournette and Darius Geis on the field at the same time. Uh, which is interesting, trying to get a little misdirection going there. Again, some teams think about guys and think about Fournette. The cool part about that formation and that type of play calling is that Fournette and guys both run and catch the ball extremely well. <clears throat> and that'll cause your defense to thin out a little bit because you're going to have some guys 
going after guys. You're going to have some guys going after Fournette. You got to remain disciplined. Uh, Danny Etling uh, is a, trying to allow them to open up the offense a little bit more. Uh, we'll see how effective he is because he has to deal with the Alabama pass rush. Tim Williams, Ryan Anderson, Jonathan Allen, Dalvin Thompson dropping up to knock down the passes. Deron Payne manhandling guards. The LSU offensive line against the Alabama defensive line is going to be the matchup that decides whether or not they'll have any success against Alabama in this game. No matter how good your skill position players are, they have DJ Shark at wide receiver. They have, uh, like I said, Fournette guys. And just talent in general, a Trayvon Durall at wide receiver who had a long pass on Alabama last year. Uh, you can have those guys, but if you don't have the time to get them the ball, or if your quarterback's constantly got pressure in his face, eventually he's going to make a mistake, or he's going to get hurt, or he's going to cough up the ball. That is going to be a matchup. I know mean, LSU has good offensive linemen as usual. They had Ethan Polchick. They had Weathersby starting a few times. Um, but one of them got hurt. I can't say the other guy's name. <laughs> it's an interesting name, but uh, he he's coming back into the lineup, and so they may be able to put their, their center back in the normal spot and let their two tackles get back to playing. So they look really healthy, too. Uh, Ed O'Dron even said that the team is uh, they look pretty good physically at this point. So LSU offensive line against Alabama defensive line is a matchup that you want to look at to see what would happen. That will set the tone <laughs> for the whole matchup. Now, getting on to the Alabama side, you got Jalen Hurts, of course, who, while he's been dynamic at running the ball, and at times he's passed the ball um, and hit the receivers where he needed to be, but we've also noticed that he tends to either hold on to the ball a little bit too long, waiting on his receivers to get open. So, he need, so he's been needing to get rid of the ball faster, throw his receivers open, and According to Saban and some of the reports, he has been doing that during the bye week. He was working with some receivers out the practice, throwing the ball, working on timing. So we'll see if that translates to the game this week. Also, with that, because Jalen's going to need time to throw the ball, another matchup to watch is the LSU defensive line versus the Alabama offensive line. As I was saying before, LSU has Arden Key and number 99. They have a good, def good defense. Their pass rush, though, doesn't seem to be as strong. It's not. Uh, it's definitely not an Alabama level. Um, they're talented, but they don't seem to be monsters. Uh, and that would be interesting because, as I've been saying all year, this Alabama offensive line has been so much better in terms of blocking, both for pass and run. The pass blocking this year is fantastic. Jonah Williams deserves a lot of credit for that, the true freshman right tackle. He's been playing great. Uh, speaking of, Alphonse Taylor will not be playing this week. Uh, Lester Cotton most likely will be the right guard again, which I really like. He's a talented guy. He's been playing well every time he gets in there. Uh, but Cam Robinson, Jonah Williams, Pitchbacker, uh, Lester Cotton, and Bradley Bozeman have been a great and cohesive unit who every time Jalen Hurts drops back, it's a clean pocket, and he gets like three or four feet in front of him with nobody to, to pressure him in his way. And if that's what LSU is going to bring bring to the game, they will be in trouble. So that matchup, will LSU's defensive line get pressure? How much impact will Arden Key make? Will Arden Key go up against Cam Robinson or will he go against John Williams? But based on their formations and based on what I've seen for Dave or Ronda, Arden Key will be lining up on the right side of the defensive line and he will be going after Cam Robinson. So Cam Robinson versus Arden Key is a matchup to watch. And they may flip him and he may try to go after the true freshman. But I have confidence in both of those guys. Now, uh, Jalen is going to have to throw some guys open because the LSU secondary is pretty good. They have safeties. They have, their cornerbacks are playing great, man. They play man-to-man -man coverage, and they're going to force you, similar to Alabama, they're going to force you to throw the ball accurately and on time um, while they allow their front seven to take care of the rest, or the hope is that the front seven to take care of the rest because Alabama's offensive line is also really good at run blocking, as we've seen this team I think they're coming up already on trying to surpass last year's team for rushing total. And we're just barely oh, over halfway through the season. Uh, Damian Harris, who, who's been dealing with injuries lately, is seen to be healing up. Joshua Jacobs, who also is dealing with injuries, is, is healing up. Bo Scarborough may or may not play because he has an illness. 
I don't know what it is, probably just cold, flu, whatever it may be, but he's been dealing with the illness, so uh, he's day-to-day. B.J. Emmons for sure will not play. He is out because he has an injury to his ankle. Um, he should be back in a few weeks or so. They probably don't have to rush him because he's not, you know, first or second back. He's the last back on the roster, even though he does provide us depth. So look for a, dose, a big dose of Damian Harris and Joshua Jacobs in this game, and probably some Jalen Hurts runs. The Alabama run blocking has been great this year as well. <clears throat> now on to Alabama defense. What everyone's been wanting to hear about is that Eddie Jackson is hurt, and he's out for the rest of the season, as we all know. And we, and that's been sad because he's such a playmaker. It's great watching. I'm pretty sure fans of other teams like watching him play too, just because he's such a great playmaker. Uh, who's going to replace him is has been confirmed since earlier in this week, and a lot of people thought this anyway. Minka Fitzpatrick will be replacing Eddie Jackson at safety, so Ronnie Harrison and Minka Fitzpatrick will be at the safety spot. Now, the issue is who's going to play corner and who's going to play nickelback? Because you know Minka played corner and base, and Minka played slot in the nickel. So with Minka out, you have to find replacements for that. Of course, Marlon Humphrey is still going to play on the uh, field corner. And that leaves the boundary corner and the uh, slot position open. Now, Tony Brown, they say, has been working out a lot in the nickel and dime packages on defense. Now, what they haven't let us know is, does that mean, well, I think that means that Tony is not playing corner in the base for sure. That would mean I assume that Anthony Averitt is playing corner in the base defense on the other side, in the boundary corner. Now, when he gets into nickel and dime packages, there's options there. So either they move Anthony Averitt to the inside and let him play slot and Tony Brown play the outside, because I think Tony Brown's body is more built for that uh for that, for that type of play, being on the outside against bigger receivers. He's a big guy, six feet, uh, 200 pounds, and fast. Uh, he could play that spot. Uh, he could be the dime back in the dime packages. Uh, so there's a lot of options there. Look for what position Tony Brown will be playing when the defense opens up in the nickel and the dime package. Will he be at the nickel in the slot spot? Will he be on the boundary corner? That'll be interesting. So the... the the lineup could be Marlon Humphrey, Tony Brown, Anthony Averitt. Uh, I expect, I, I'll predict that Tony Brown will actually be one of the outside corners in the nip one dime package, and they'll probably slip Anthony Averitt down on the inside. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Just watch the new Alabama secondary now that Eddie Jackson is out against the LSU receivers. Uh, Alabama's always get the benefit of his pass rush, though, so it'll be interesting to see if the receivers have any time to get open. Uh, but Alabama secondary is actually very good, and nothing to sneeze at. People are talking about the LSU secondary, but the Alabama secondary is also very good. Uh, now to talk about the linebackers, we all know Ruben Foster and Sean Deion Hamilton, Keith Holcomb, all those guys, they'll be going up against Cornette and Geis because the defensive line and the offensive line are going to match up, and it's going to leave the linebackers and the running backs to hit the hole together. Uh, last year, Leonard Fournette was held to only 31 yards. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they're going to be motivated and excited to try to get more this year. And so a matchup of the front seven versus the LSU line and the running backs, that would be an interesting, fun matchup as well. There you have it. <laughs> this video is longer than I thought it would be. But yeah, this is the Alabama versus the LSU preview for this 2016 game. A lot of people are expecting it to be a good game. We'll see what I think about it when I get my prediction. Uh, it'll be fun to watch for sure. I love watching this game no matter how it turns out. It's just very festive, very strong. It gets me very excited every year. So be on the lookout for that. Thanks for listening.